I really appreciate, and it's in the subtitle, his forgotten years. This is not a full biography of him. You give enough in the background to understand kind of where he came from. When you say his final forgotten years, what dates are we actually talking about? And why did you decide to focus on this time frame? Right. So the book opens in 330 BCE when he is this kind of young, implausibly successful man who, after, you know, over the course of the previous three years, has conquered and created what is the first European empire in the Middle East. And everyone's kind of expecting him to cash in, go home. But instead, He heads east to the Persian Empire's eastern borderlands, hoping to reach the end of the world. And the next seven years of his life, the part that I'm covering, are this epic wild ride, where, as I say, he's, you know, fighting elephants and he's marrying three times Macedonian kings or polygamous. He uh, has wild successes, but also buries his closest friend. And these years are often, I think, treated as a kind of degenerate aftermath of a once promising career. But in my mind, and that's a lot because, you know, he messes up, he fails, and then he figures, tries something else, and then he fails again, and then he tries something else. And to me, that's what's interesting about him. That's what's compelling. It's really only in those years when he's sort of, facing challenges in Afghanistan and South Asia, that that makes him great. And that he becomes great when they kind of when the empire strikes back. 